Have you ever heard that your experience can lie to you? And I don't mean like some freakonomics deep study that says, you know, for every, every time a 7-Eleven is robbed, here's what all the details that everybody gets wrong because they can't rely on their own, their own experience. I mean, our personal experience that affects us in either starting or growing a business. Case in point, hypothetical here, not a personal experience, but let's say you had this grandfather and this grandpa is this old wise uh, gentleman that doles out this brilliant advice. Like if somebody hits you, you make sure you double up your fist and you hit them back, son. And he's telling this to a toddler or a base, you know, somebody that says you always forgive, but you never forget. Or somebody else, you know, grandpa that says, you know, spend every month, spend every dime that you got. Cause you never know if you're going to live this whole life or not. Now that grandpa can really brag about the years of experience. And I've heard this before. Well, I've got four kids and every one of them grew up just fine and dandy and they all have kids and none of them's ax murder. So I must be doing something pretty well. And why ax murder is always the benchmark. I have no idea, but that's, that's just kind of the way it's been for a long time. There are 8 billion people on planet earth. Every one of them have been born to parents. Not every, not all of them raised by parents, but whatever. Being a parent is cool. It's fun. It's awesome. It's tough. And it builds a lot of experience, but it doesn't necessarily give us all of the experience we need to do a lot of advice to other people or to take our parenting to the next level, just because we have years of experience. So case in point, I work a lot with startups and with existing businesses, startups. It's not uncommon. I'll have somebody come to see me. That's roughly my age. I'm 47 and they'll want to launch their new career. Let's say it's a banker and now they want to be a consultant. If I talk to them, what are you going to do? Who are you going to work with? They say, well, I'm just relying on my years of experience. Cool. What experience? You know, I've been just doing this for 25 years and I got a good grasp of it. Great. What does that mean? I'm just a people person. <laughs> okay. You've got to be able to translate experience into skills, go into meetings, being willing to pick up the telephone and talk to somebody. All of these things are fine. They're not skills. They're not translatable in a lot of cases. You have to be willing to build career capital in order to create the skills necessary and not just rely on experience. That's kind of lied to you at this point. Same with an existing business. If I take somebody that's been open for 10 years and they've got a handful of employees and they've just kind of stagnated when I want to talk to them about growth, I get the, well, this is the way we've done it all the way up to this point and we're still here. So we must be doing something right relying on experience. I mean, based off that example, the post office is a wild success because it's been around for decades on end yet. We know that they've got issues. Same with your business experience. You have to continue to build new skills. You can't rely on the same networking event that you've been attending forever. You can't rely on the same onboarding process with your clients, especially if you're getting client turnover, you can't rely on not really training your employees because we've never really trained them before. We've just had them follow Joe Bob around and he taught them how to do everything. So with a startup or an existing business, your experience can lie to you. It's up to us to do a few different things. First and foremost, let's say three things. You want to learn a new skill regularly, whatever that skill might be in an area that you're a little weak in. I love for all of us to play to our strengths. But let's say I'm not great at reading and reviewing financial statements, even though I know that's where a lot of my business information is I'll Maybe you need to take a class and learn more about how to read a P and L better yet. Maybe you need to take a webinar on how to sell or take a Toastmasters class on how to present second read. I know that's the old school. Everybody says, well, I like to read and readings this and Average people I talk to, a lot of them, even some of the success, successful ones, they're not really readers. They read new, you know, news websites and blogs occasionally. And reading can be listening, but a book, a long form, not doom scrolling book. Got our 10 year old registered for high school yesterday. And you see this poster up about why kids need to read 20 minutes a day. If they read 20 minutes a day, that'll be 1.8 million words per year. A kid that reads eight minutes a day is in the 90th percentile of 
or eight minutes, 20 minutes a day is in the 90th percentile of, of kids their age at a reading level. If they read 10 minutes a day, they're at 50%. If they read one minute a day, which is more than most adults, they're down at 10%. So think of all of the interaction you can get by just reading or listening to one book a month. And then, you know, lastly, join a coaching group, any kind of co coaching group that where other people are pushing themselves beyond their existing experience, where they have an area of expertise and an, a place that you may not. If you need more skills, you know, working with digital marketing, find you a digital marketing or, or a person in a group that can give you a hand. If you need help with your leadership ability because your team isn't quite where they want it to be, find somebody that's got more people under them. Those three things, blocking out time to learn something new, reading, and joining a coaching group can help overcome the aspect of your experience lying to you. And as far as that grandpa goes, thank you, Mr. Alvin. As far as that grandpa goes, let's say if he is or isn't real, all four of his kids grew up. How do you think all of his grandkids turned out? I'll let you just guess. I won't tell you, but whatever you're picturing is exactly right. And that's a whole different topic for a different day about generational issues and how people themselves with their experience.